Never trust an artist who has clean hands. Cut! I'm resizing this love ring and there's engraving on both the outside and the inside. So where I cut my seam, I have to avoid both of those words. Um, so I look for a good spot and I'm going to cut the ring open, cut off about a half a size. And a half a size is probably going to be about three millimeters. It's not very much. Okay, I have my ring mandrel and I'm going to wrap a strip of paper around the base where it's size seven and make a marker where that overlap happens. I'm going to wrap it around the six and a half marker. I need to remove two millimeters. I'll remove probably a millimeter just with a saw blade on one side. I want to show you the new Northern Lights combo. Ooh, see that flash? <laughs> this is the Northern Lights glaze combo. It's got obsidian with seaweed color, which causes that blue to happen, and then smoky merlot, which is what the red is. You see the flash of color when you turn it? Pretty. Okay, I love this new combo. I'm going to use my bench pin. It has a slit and an inset for the ring to sit into. And I need my optimizer and I need my saw. These look so awesome. Someone took my stapler. A little jeweler's wax on the blade so it slides through. Her life, I think that stuff's called. Up and down, perpendicular strokes with the saw blade. I'm making sure to keep my hand out of the way so when that saw blade pops through the metal, I don't saw into my hand. Cuts right here. Okay, now I just need to remove a bit more from it. I'm just going to slide it over about two millimeters. My lines are crooked so I can't join that seam up. I have to open it up a little and file it straight. I'm using the hole in the bench pin to work so I can keep my ring flat here and just go straight up and down with this and try and get a straight flush line where those two ends can join up. Okay, I got that a little bit straighter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the sides together with my thing like that. It's, it's kind of soft hammerhead part. I'm going to I'm going to use my steel block. I need to cover it with something so I don't scratch the exterior. With my needle nose pliers, I'm going to pinch that down. I'm going to force them back together by pinching. Okay. Close. Okay. I'm going to straighten it up. Now the ring sizer is not going to tell us much right now because it's not really round. Hopefully I don't lose too much when I saw through it to fix the gap. That whole gap, this whole gap has to be gone before I solder it. I'm going to saw through that gap to straighten it, to make it neat. Whoosh! Let's get some more wax on that thing. I'm using kind of a large saw blade. I know it looks tiny, but it's kind of a large saw blade for this job. I could use a finer one open again. We're going to fit it together the same way we did before. We're going to tap one side down. Wow, that overlapped really well. And now I'm going to pinch it again. First I, first I pinch from an angle so that they move back to where they're not past each other anymore. And now they're butted up and now I try and line them up. I hate this thick metal. Oh, it's so hard to do. <laughs> Thinner metal is so much easier. I put up a price on my jewelry. I put a much higher price for the thick one because I don't want to do thick ones. 
You'll pay. You'll pay for my labor. Make the butt ends past each other. The reason why I do that is because then once they once I move the butt ends into place and they push against each other, there's force there. And that's what holds that join while it's soldering. I'm creating creating tension. I use the flat nose instead of round nose for this because if you scar the metal then that's something else that you have to fix and you don't want to do that so by having flat metal against the flat metal there's less likelihood of scarring pretty good pretty good let's see let's hold that up to the light yep I can hardly see any light through it there's the tiniest it's the tiniest bit of light through it but I believe solder that the solder will fill that gap. So just there's a slight stepping there, which I which I want to fix. I don't want there to be a step. I want it to be a smooth line. Get them together better. Yeah, that's that's good. That'll work. I'm going to use flux on the whole piece. I learned recently that if you need to reliquify your flux, you use distilled water. And that has really helped because mine I forget to put lids on things or it takes a while or it's dry out and it dries out really quick so yes distilled water which you can make at home but it's much easier to just buy it by the jug by the water section at the grocery store little solder chips are called solder palins palions solder This little solder bit should be enough to fill in that line. Went hiking and I found this with some cigarettes out in a field. Looks like a kid's little purse, so I took the cigarettes and I tore them up and I put water on them and I threw them in the garbage. But I kept the lighter because lighter works. They do not need to be starting fires where I live. Actually, you know, little kids don't need to be starting fires anywhere. I'm moving the heat around the whole object so that when that starts to melt, it'll join both sides. There it goes. There it goes, beautiful. I'm just gonna run the solder up to the hottest point here. Solder actually travels toward the flame. Let's pick that baby up. I'm going to drop it up here. Dropping the hot ring into hot acid and I'm going to leave it for 20 minutes. Whoa! This ring with the stone in it also needs to be resized. I have a tool called heat shield. It's a paste that you can put over the stone in order to keep the stone from fracturing from thermic thermal shock. Thermic. Is that even a word? Um, I could put that and surround this stone with heat shield and then I could solder the back and then I would not sure if these stones can go in the pickling solution so I'd have to suspend this into the pickling solution to get the black fire scale off of the ring. But this is a size 7 which is a standard size and I just so happen to have a stone and a cup, which is called a bezel cup. I think it's a wiser choice right now, since I have a replacement stone, to just make another ring and put her old ring into my inventory. It's not engraved, there's nothing special about it. So, my best bet is to just make another ring. It's actually simpler than resizing a ring. So, let's do that. Why do I keep saying sentences in the wrong order? Now this wire is so much easier to bend than that thick gauge so hard. Oh, it should be finished. I'm using copper tongs to remove it from the pickle pot. When it comes out of the pickle pot, it's all white. Okay, then we need to rinse it in some water, get that acid off there, and now I can touch it. Where the words were, has all turned white. This white on top of the silver is 0.999 pure silver. So none of the copper that's mixed into sterling silver is showing. This is one of my finer 
meaning not coarse, but fine, smooth polishing wheels. Polish up the surface a little bit. I charge usually about $20 to resize a ring, depending on the difficulty. And I charge for custom jobs pretty much uh, above $50, like starting. And most of my jobs are under $500 total. That's the range, I would say, for custom, for custom pieces. The more complicated, the more time, the more material, the more costs. I need to round it back out again. My bench, and I guess this is what it's for. Your ring is sized. Handy dandy ring bending tool. Bend the metal all the way around past where it would butt up against itself. I need it to be slightly, like maybe around a size six for that to be the right size, so too big. So I'm gonna do what I did earlier, tap it together more. Check it again. There it's at a size six. And I hammered the band a little bit to get it to the exact size. I'm going to cut straight line through here. The Lindstrom Super Flush Cutters are great. So I cut to the side. I use the flush side of the tool to the side I'm keeping. Now I'm going to cut on the other side. I've turned the cutters around so that the flush side is attached to that side that I'm also keeping on the ring. And the V-shaped part of the cut will end up on the waist. Melt it down and use it for something else. I'm cutting it. There we go. So the excess pieces, I'll melt these down and use it later. Try and keep it tidy. If your workbench is clean, you're less likely to have some sort of accident. Hurt yourself. Also, keep the dust, if you have it cleaned off, then you can wipe the dust down and less dust gets in your face. Dust. Where I cut with the cutters, there's still a little line there, so I am going to open up it looks like a giant jump ring. I'm going to open it up to the side, just the same way you open a jump ring correctly, with a little file. <laughs> with the file. It's pretty quick. Now I'm going to do the other side, flip it over and just... I'm going to take my saw, just like before when sizing it, and I'm going to cut straight through the seam to make sure I can get a nice flush join. You know those, the red caps on like a Coke bottle or on a milk jug? Well, I used one of those to make a new mouth for this. Heated it up, I melted it, I stuck it in there, and I squashed it flat. Just, it worked. Worked great. Now I'm going to solder it shut. You cover the whole thing with flux, and that protects the metal from fire scale. You'll see it turns black, but once you pickle it, the black goes away. If you don't protect your metal, that fire scale, fire scale can be a real beast. You don't want that. A new solder coming in in a couple days when I need to make some post earrings. And yes, you know, you probably haven't seen me make jewelry much lately, and that's because I don't 100% always enjoy custom orders. I don't know why. I think I just don't like to be told what to do. It's easier to just make something and then put a price tag on it. If somebody wants it, they give you the money. But with custom jobs, there's a lot of conversation. Get this out of your view. Turning on the propane first. This is a Smith Little Torch, if you were wondering. And it's got propane here and oxygen on this side. And the oxygen makes that propane burn very hot. There you go. Go with a little bit of a fluffier flame. Now I'm just drying off that handy flux and my little solder palon. It fell off. It fell off, but it's right there. In case I need to pick up that little palon, I've got this thing ready and I'm going to have it hot. Just move it back over there by the seam. Okay. I'm going to drop that, protecting myself here with the lid, drop it into the hot acid. And this water up here, it's just distilled water from the lid. Unfortunately, I need to re-engrave one of the letters because when I reshaped the ring, the hammer blow took it off, it looks like. So, I'm going to get out my tiniest 
engraving tool. I stamp the letters, but I'm going to have to do it by hand because I can't stamp it when the ring is formed into a ring. I stamp when the ring is flat out before making it round into a ring shape. Tiny, tiny drill bit. It's near impossible to see how small it is. Zoom in on it and then tiniest drill bit ever. I'm going to use Black Max. I lost, I, the lid crumbled that goes with this. So I really should get a proper storage solution, solution for it. The problem is this stuff will corrode anything metal that it comes near. So I store it in the garage away from tools. Unless I forget. And I'm blackening the engraving. Now I need a soft buffing wheel. Polishing kits like this, that's what I use. That should do the trick now. And I'm going to polish the interior a little bit. 